Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Oh my god, do we have tea today. There's so much going on with Gabby Hanna's latest series, so today we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about the second and third episode of her series, but before we get into it, I'm doing an iPad giveaway, so check out this video if you're interested in entering. It's also going to be on the screen somewhere, so you can just click on that. Also, make sure to subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's get into it. So her first video actually is all about tea channels, so this is kind of awkward. It's called Hold Tea Channels Accountable. I'm not going to talk about this one too much because it's on a very sensitive topic and I don't want to further add to the tea channels talking about this, but I also feel like it is an important topic to report on. So I don't know. Here we go. Hopefully I don't butcher the story, but quick backstory. Last year, Gabby Hanna posted a video featuring a picture of Bianca Devins not knowing who she was. 100% for sure. This outfit right here is you already straight wear. up what I wore from seventh grade to college. And now. And now, <laughs> I do have that shirt. People got very angry and started hating on her and saying that she was exploiting a child's Gabby apologized, but now she's saying it wasn't even her fault. It was just the tea channels who exploited the story and caused the family trauma with all their videos on the topic. And the family has gotten on camera and said that they were hurt by what these people did to them. We didn't see anything wrong with what she did. She Googled e-girl and pulled up a picture of Bianca. Simple mistake. It was a simple mistake. There was nothing disrespectful about it. We didn't feel disrespected. We don't feel Bianca would have been disrespected. We think Bianca would have been honored and so excited that yes. Gabby Hanna pulled up her picture and was talking about her. They were a compliment. You know, they had the same shirt. No one should be offended. No one should be. All these drama channels that are using Bianca for clout, it's absolutely ridiculous that's because that's all you're doing. We are offended about and you guys also shouldn't be. Yeah. Not about know. Gabby Hanna complimenting her shirt. Yeah. Gabby wasn't using Bianca for clout like all these drama channels now want to turn it into something that it's not. She didn't do anything wrong. And even though she didn't do anything wrong because so many people were offended, she did reach out to me and Olivia and apologize. And we told her there's no reason for an apology because we don't see that you did anything wrong. So we think what you guys should be offended by is now other people want to bring about drama and use Bianca's death for clout. And these disgusting people that are exploiting my daughter's death for clout and likes and follows and profit. And there has not been an apology from them. That to me is infuriating. I have to side with Gabby and that she really did just scroll through a feed, come across a picture of a girl she didn't know. And like, that was really it, right? Am I missing something here? And then she addresses the drama channels who kept talking about it directly. You used the murder of a child to exploit me. And that is disgusting. You used me as a shield, accusing me of exploiting Bianca Devin's name, face, and story for money and clicks, when all I ever did was for a fraction of a f***ing moment show her picture and say I liked her t-shirt. You, on the other hand, plastered her name and her face across your thumbnails and your titles and reduced her to a victim who Gabby Hanna exploited? Gabby apparently came out afterwards saying that she did know about Bianca Devins because the article that she came across was literally about her. I didn't read the f***ing article. I was looking at pictures and you knew that, Angelica Oles. She says that she did the right thing because she tried to handle the issue privately and quietly, but the same couldn't be said for T channels. And she specifically calls out Angelica Oles and asks her to apologize to the family. And then also mentions Dustin Daly, the viewer's voice, AKA Nick Snyder, Rapzilla, Anna Oop, Spill Sash, Ready to Glare, Ashley Kyle, and Trisha Paytas. And she ends off the video with this adorable scene. Again, she has likes and dislikes off and she added a little author's note in the description saying, when I say drama channels, what I mean is tea channels, not the channels who report facts and do commentary. The ones who emit important information slash report in a biased manner slash spin completely false narratives and exploit other creators for money. The ones who will flip their opinion in a matter of seconds if they think that's what will get them the most clicks. These channels are as bad or worse than the tabloids you see in a grocery checkout line. I'm not their only victim and I assure you if something isn't done, I won't be their last. What they do is clear creator harassment and YouTube has offered no protection. It's extremely heartbreaking to me that the platform I called home for so long refuses to enforce their own rules when so many channels are in clear violation. These channels have pushed me to the brink of suicide and have made their careers on lying about me. If you don't believe me, check their views when they speak about me versus when they don't. There's been a lot of backlash from T and drama channels in response to this video. T Spill tweeted, Gabby Hanna named me as someone who made a video on her and Bianca that needs to apologize. I never made one. 
These channels had absolutely no way of knowing the mother was okay with Gabby's video. Gabby didn't even know the mother was okay with Gabby's video until she reached out after getting tons of backlash. We can't see into the future to know that. Okay, but like in Gabby's defense, when she uploaded the video, she didn't even know anything about Bianca. So it's like, it's not like she could have done anything about it. Nick Snyder also tweeted, sorry doesn't sit right with me going on a video to drag channels while using the death of someone you exploited. Seems as if your image is more important than the girl's life you claim to be so sorry over. You weren't sorry when you did the original video and you still aren't. Dustin Daly also tweeted, yeah, let's make this video about Bianca when there's a whole slew of Gabby has done aside from that. Kenza Cosmetics scam, trying to get children's IP addresses, mentally abusing Jesse, trying to destroy Alex, having her fans harass Jen to make her lose her job. Should I keep going? This is the tweet that I mostly agree with. Like, yeah, Gabby, address this stuff, please. I also want to read this comment saying, Gabby said drama channels plastered her name, her face on thumbnails. Okay, so this is whataboutism at its finest. Okay, I did this awful thing, but what about these people? Gabby, sweetheart, drama channels just report on public knowledge. They didn't make you look bad. You already did that. So what do you want them to be held accountable for? The only reason you hate them so much is because they never stop talking about the dumb shit you do, including using Bianca as you did and talking nonsense about ADHD. Absolute buffoonery. Gabby also went to defend the videos that she's making and called it art. All that was to say that, yeah, it is art to me. Like it's a piece about like a girl literally watching therapy, like her therapy sessions, but the therapist is my camera and I'm unloading in a way that I could never do in therapy because of fear of judgment or time limit or confusion, like human error. Like it's just me, dude. Like I don't have to explain and over explain because I already know what's going on. You know what I mean? But like, yeah, like even just trying to explain to somebody how my job works. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just too hard, man. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's like a really cool series. I'm really proud of it. Like I'm, I'm really proud of it for a lot of reasons because I can see myself grow as a person, an artist and an editor. You'll definitely notice as um, the series goes on, like you'll see the editing change because it goes from like super shoddy to like, kind of dope <laughs> i explore myself like artistically and creatively a lot in it like this is this series has opened me up in like such a cool way i've truly found myself people think is me being crazy or losing my mind which maybe it is but like that's just who i am as an artist and just because gabby has specifically been calling out angelica Oles, here's what angelica said about gabby when it all went down um, and she just looks at the picture, doesn't read the caption, or she does, she just doesn't care. And she goes, oh my god, I used to have t-shirts like that. Yeah, that'll be good for my aesthetic. And she just goes on about how that's like, oh yeah, we'll just do a look somewhat like that. And she just forgets to realize that that is a murder victim and doesn't address it at all. If that was me, I would have just cut it out the video. Even if you didn't realize, editing you should have realized that that is such a thing to do. To look at a murder victim and be like, oh yeah, that, that t-shirt's nice. I, I would love to dress like that. Yeah, I remember dressing like that. Yeah, we'll use that for the e-girl video. And just forgetting to mention the fact that that is literally a girl that isn't here anymore. Oh, it just blows my mind how unaware she is of how of a human being she is. I don't think Angelica said the most terrible things in the world for Gabby to be putting her on blast like that, but I also agree that we can't blame Gabby for not recognizing who Bianca was even during editing. Like the worst crime was just missing the article. That's not grounds for the hate that she's been receiving. Angelica also tweeted, I never used Bianca's name for clouds, not on my title, not on my thumbnail, not on my tags. I reported on a story that many people sent in. No one from Bianca's family reached out to ask for an apology. So my assumption was they didn't want one didn't want to continue dragging this on. However, she later corrected herself in a tweet saying, it has come to my attention that I did have Bianca's name in my thumbnail. This was not for clout or attention, but I can see how it could be used in that way. So both have been blurred. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. I also want to mention that on Gabby's last video, Jesse Smiles tweeted about it saying, Gabby, I don't know if your plan for me in the series is to follow through with your threats from last summer of talking about our past. I do, however, sincerely beg you to leave my trauma out of it. Stop using the clips of me crying. You've done enough, leave this out of it. And she put this clip over audio of her talking about people who tried to put a target on her back. I get it, Gabby. We had a toxic falling out after our friendship ended. Please leave me alone now. I have been physically ill every day, every day wondering what she's going to say. If she's going to present situations with context or without. If I'm going to be harassed over it. I just want to fucking crawl in a hole. I'm so beyond the point of over this. 
What's also interesting is that when Gabby uploaded this video, hashtag apologize to Jesse Smell started trending on Twitter, which is hilarious because just last week, hashtag apologize to Gabby Hanna was trending. It's just funny how the internet works, man. Now let's move on to the third episode of the series, which she just dropped a couple of hours ago. It's called To the People I've Hurt, Past Problematic Content. In this video, she says she wants to take ownership for the inappropriate or racially charged content she's put out. She starts off with this fine. I love running through black neighborhoods with my shirt off. <laughs> I'm gonna steal all of your baby daddies. <laughs> I can't say that it was um, okay at the time because I remember there being a lot of comments of people being like, this is racist. She said that at the time she didn't think it was racist, but definitely realizes it now and apologizes for it. But she also mentions that that was the kind of humor that she was raised on and was exposed to growing up. She then acknowledges that she's made several other racially charged fines, including this one. And again, at the time, people were like, this is racist. And I'm like, I'm in a room full of black people. Obviously, I'm not racist. This is okay. I'm being co-signed by other creators. She states the fact that a lot of the time, black creators and comedians and actors are stereotyped into the token black person role, and she unfortunately put her friends in a situation like that as well. She also apologizes for having taken so long to apologize for all this. She was always kind of waiting for the perfect moment, but the perfect moment doesn't exist, especially for Gabby, because she's always in some sort of scandal somehow. She also apologizes for all of her insensitive or inappropriate tweets she's put out in the past. I feel like I made a lot more jokes than I'm aware of in relation to kids. When I see them now, I'm like, oh, ew. She says that at the time it felt okay to write because those were the kind of jokes that comedians were making or were in South Park and were doing very well at the time and she was only contributing to it. So she thanks everyone who held her accountable for her actions. She also thanks those who supported her during this time but also asks her fans to stop defending those tweets or vines. I should be held accountable to that, so. Quick question though for you guys. Is the stuff that she addressed in this video the same stuff that people are talking about right now? Because right now people just want her to address and apologize to Justice Smiles, right? Like, is she waiting to come out with a whole entire video on that? I don't know, man. I really hope so. One user commented, You should be held accountable, but the way the internet has treated you in regards to things like this is not holding you accountable. It's just painting you as a monster because of everything else. Of course, you were defensive. People were attacking you, not bringing to light bad things you've said and done. Okay, so that was it on Gabby. Just to change the mood a little bit, here's a picture of Jeff Wittick looking hot as fuck. <laughs> I mean, look at that. He also posted this caption. This was for the one year anniversary with his run in with the death crane saying, there's no words to describe how grateful I am still to be here and have the love and support from all of you. I also just wanna give a big thanks to the people that helped fix me up. I'm lucky and fortunate enough to get the treatment and most importantly, have it covered by David Dobrik. As it should, LOL, thanks, Dave. Right there, look, 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 I'll suck your dick, daddy, David. Speaking of Jeff Wittig, he also talked about and responded to Trisha Paytas. If you guys remember, Jeff on his podcast commented on Frenemy's ending. Trisha Paytas tweeted at Jeff being like, oh, it's funny that you're talking about toxic relationships when your friend literally tried to kill you once. And so this is Jeff's response from his podcast. And you know what? I said some shit in the last podcast. It feels so long ago. But I said, I was like, yeah, oh, Frenemies was toxic. All the all these fun bullshit Frenemies fan accounts. That, and you know who I'm talking to. You motherfucker, Death Noodles. You fucking little That's weasel. Cool. Trisha tweeted me back saying our relationship's toxic when you almost got killed by your friend. And everybody yeah. like li liked the tweet and loved it. Like it was some big major clap back. Like you guys had a fuck fight live that fell apart while eating Domino's pizza. That's the content you want to make? Look, people love the drama. So I get it. I understand. But don't clap back at me by saying, oh, your friend almost killed you. Yeah, I didn't want that to happen. Yeah. You guys chose to eat pizza and argue. Argue about money and your relationship fell apart and then you sabotage each other's families and the biggest, deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah, that's toxic. Okay, I'm still friends with the kid who hurt me. It's just weird to weaponize that. And that was it for today's video, you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye.